to have the resources for the fiscal year 2012. So right now we are here to announce that at today's state meeting we're going to be introducing our yet flashing yellow light bill and it has been sponsored by a number of colleagues and what they, this bill look is that to use the flashing yellow light at Central Park and other public park after the park is closed for bill or for cars. We believe that it is our responsibility to to take care of the safety of the pedestrian, but also it is our responsibility to be sure to protect the bicycle rider that has been using the park for so many decades and that right now has become a target as a way of the city trying to get more revenue at this particular moment. So I, we've been, we met and I just gotta say that the idea of this bill is the result, is the product of the bicycle rider groups in the city. We met, we talked about this issue, all the colleague members, all the colleagues, they've been writing letters, they've been back on board, President Manhattan is Street, they also sent a letter of support, and we hope that after we introduce this bill today, we will get the number of, of, of council members signing on this bill, who already have expressed the intention to signing after the bill is presented in today's state of meeting, and, and we are here just to announce that we are introducing our a flashing yellow bill. We hope that working with the administration, with the DOT, and the NYPD will be able to get a solution on this problem. Now I would like to call my colleague, and, and Lander, who is also a council member that has one of the parts of the for sponsoring the flashing yellow light bill. I want to thank the members of the bike riding community for uh, working with this office to craft a smart solution. Uh, my name is uh, Brad Lander. I'm the New York City Council member re uh, representing uh, Prospect Park and Park Slope. I'm no stranger to uh, bicycle controversy, as some of you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody here, we all want safe streets. Safe streets require smart enforcement. Um, I, I, for one, would, would love to work with the NYPD and the Department of Transportation on smart initiatives that make our streets safer. They're safer than they've ever been. Fewer pedestrians are getting killed in accidents, and that's a great thing, but we absolutely can do better. And I think if we want to take some of the technologies that the NYPD has developed, like Comstat, use the bills that the council passed last month that are going to give us better data on car accidents, better data on bike accidents, better data on injuries, and use that to help us target smart enforcement to find the intersections where people are in accidents, where people are getting hurt, where people are getting killed, and saying, hey, this is a great place for enforcement. Too many people have been injured, too many people have been killed at this intersection. Why don't we take NYPD resources and why don't we have some officers say, you know what, we can save lives if we watch that intersection for a while. Give some tickets to people who run red lights. Now, I think those are probably more likely the ones who are causing the accidents to be cars than they are to be cyclists. But as we find intersections that are problems, let's target our enforcement at the places that we're learning where enforcement can save lives. But I gotta say, if our goal is safe streets, giving out tickets to people that are riding fast in Prospect Park and Central Park is not a way that we are going to effectively use police resources to make anybody safer or save anybody's lives. It may be a way, as Councilman Rodriguez has said, to raise some revenue. It may be a way to score some political points. But if our collective goal is to make streets safer, then let's work together on a smart approach to enforcement that looks at the vehicles that are doing the most harm and damage, the intersections where those accidents are taking place, and targeting our enforcement there. The legislation that Councilman Rodriguez is introducing today will make it the, the rules in our parks, the rules that everybody knows the rules in our parks should be, uh, that cyclists can ride at speed when the cars are not there, that they should pay attention and yield the pedestrians at those intersections. We absolutely need to continue doing outreach and education to make sure people know and follow those rules. And I also want to thank the bike advocacy and cyclist groups that are here for the education and outreach work they're doing uh, to make sure that cyclists know those rules and follow those rules. Let's get this bill passed. Let's get a sane uh, enforcement policy restored to our parks. 
and then let's turn our enforcement to where it needs to be, making our streets safer for all their users. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think that the question is, 
the number of bicycle riders that has been using it is their right also to use our public uh, park. And, and now let's look on the number, let's see on, on, on how much it would take on the new technology. Uh, they, again, this is only today we are just introducing this bill. Uh, we have not had a conversation with the DOT yet. We're ready to have a conversation. So you don't have a cost estimate? We don't have a cost, thank you. Just to add on this point, though, in, in a lot of cases, I mean, both in Central Park and in Prospect Park, there are quite a lot of stoplights already. So switching them from being green, yellow, red to flashing yellow is costless. I mean, that's not to say there might not be a few places you would want to add additional ones, but by and large, the lights exist, and switching them to flash yellow will cost the city not a penny. Okay, would you mind stepping over and saying that by a microphone? Uh, sure. Uh, in Central Park and Prospect Park, uh, there are already stoplights at, at many places along the ring. So switching them from green, yellow, red to flashing yellow has no other problems.